We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Yo, my dude, I want to congratulate you. This is Eddie, your boy Eddie from Eddie Tainment. We've done a ton of videos together on the East and West Coast podcast. Um, I look forward to us hitting 100 videos together, but you're doing it with the Knights of Horror. You got your podcast going, so I just want to thank you for putting out that content and also congratulate you on hitting your 100th video. Uh, to you and your Knights of Horror family, keep it up, guys. You hit 100, or not 100,000, you hit 1,000 subscribers, which is a huge feat, 100 uh, episodes on your podcast, which is another huge feat. So you guys deserve all the credit that you're getting. Congratulations, guys. Um, really, there's not much more than I could say than that. I'm really proud to know you, proud to, to have been working with you guys for, for the time that we've been working together. And keep it up. Look forward to working with you more often, my friend. Let's get on that next East versus West Coast. 100 episodes. Congratulations to the Knights of Horror. Anthony, when the hell do you sleep? Uh, congrats, guys. Here's to another 100 more. Yo, what's up? It's Connor. Just wanted to say a big congrats to the boys for 100 episodes. That is awesome. Here's to 100 more. Keep on killing it. All right, guys, this is Adrian here from Launch TV. I just want to say big congrats to Anthony and Sammy from the Knights of Horror. They're about to hit their 100th Mindless Horror podcast. And honestly, these guys have been grinding nonstop. They hit 1K subs. They're just going to keep growing. They're honestly the best people you'll ever meet. They're great people. Just leave it at that. <laughs> Anyways, congrats, you guys. I can't wait to see you guys later on this year. And have fun and stay safe. Congrats again. What's up, everybody? SoCal Exporn here. Just want to congratulate you, Anthony, and Sammy, and all the previous people who are a part of the Mindless Horror Podcast to a congrats for a hundredth episode. Congrats to you guys. Congrats to Tony the most for sticking through everything. My favorite episodes and favorite memories from Mindless Horror Podcast were coincidentally every single one that SoCal Exporn was a part of. Yeah, but for real though, like, good Good job with this podcast. You're doing great, Anthony, and the rest of the crew that's all behind the Mindless Horror Podcast. Cheers to another 100 episodes very soon, and then cheers to, after that, 500 episodes. Let's see how far this podcast can go. But good job, guys, and congratulations. Um, if I conjure up a demon, this... That's my mess up the barbecue this weekend. Mm, no. Oh. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Zombie Chris. Hello. Hi. I was not paid or endorsed, but I do sponsor and do suggest. This is not a plug or commercial. What is up, everybody? Hello and welcome to the channel. Big congrats to Knights of Horror on doing 100 episodes on the podcast. I believe at one time you stated that the great, marvelous, fantastic next generation YouTuber named Zombie Chris was that inspired you. Well, in reality, uh, you inspired me with all the content, with all the variety, the podcast, a hundred episodes. That is insane. I mean, me and Connor are only going on like five or six and I don't think we'll make it to the next 10. <laughs> so big congrats to you and your crew on 100 episodes and uh, make it 100 more. What is up, inmates of the asylum? Fausto Pebbles here, and I want to congratulate the Mindless Horror Podcast for 100 episodes. And not only that, but the nights of horror in reaching over 1,000 subscribers. Some of my favorite moments from the Mindless Horror Podcast so far is seeing all the guests who have made a huge impact in the horror community, such as the Traveling Haunt Squad, Tormented Society, horror comedy podcasters Kim and Ket from Kim and Ket Stay Alive, maybe? The captain of Queen Mary's Dark Harbor, Brad Hills. The director of Unlisted Owner, 
Jed Bryan, the author and illustrator of Scary Stories, A Tribute to Terror, Kurt Tuckfield, and Shane Hunt, the creative director of Midsummer Scream, Rick West, and composer of the film Killer Clowns from Outer Space, John Massari, just to name a few. While the Mindless Horror Podcast has featured some of the staples in the horror community, you guys have also featured and collaborated with such awesome YouTubers such as Adam Black, TLEV Media, JP Land 21, Lost TV, Edutainment, SoCal Exploring, Fractured Compass Productions, The Hotline, and of course, yours truly. Fausto Pebbles. Once again, guys, congratulations on your two huge milestones. This is just the beginning, and I cannot wait to see you guys grow even bigger. We are recording this in an undisclosed location in our dumpy little studio in the outskirts of Los Angeles. My name is Anthony. Uh, I'm George. And this is the Mindless Horror Podcast, episode one. Basically, this podcast, we're going to talk about everything and anything horror, uh, and if we have guests, we'll interview them of what they think of upcoming horror projects, events, um, anything horror, uh, Q&A, what they do on their channels and stuff, so if it gets that far. I- All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? January 23rd, 2018, started something special. Uh Mindless Horror Podcast, Episode 1. I'm joined here today, 100 episodes later, by my cousin, the man who I started all with, uh, George Zaragoza. A cool minute. <laughs> yeah, it really has. Yeah. Um, no, I just wanted to bring you on for a quick little segment, because uh, you were the first official co-host of the of the show, man, and... Uh, you went on for about 20 or so episodes, and um, then you hung up the cape to pursue uh, writing. was a really great decision, man, because you, you, the stuff you're writing right now is just freaking phenomenal. And I can't wait for it to get out there to, to everyone to read. Uh, I just, I've just been doing a lot of reading, really. Honestly, it's just copying other people. I mean, but I'm just not. It's just... I I mean, I I liked what we did, but I kind of found out very early on that it just wasn't for me. Like, I like, I listen to podcasts probably every week, but I just, I don't know. Like, I I didn't really gravitate towards it, and although I did have fun, I just kind of felt like towards, like, around the two-hour mark or or an hour and a half mark, I was just kind of, like, slogging through it for me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I kind of didn't really miss that part. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, like I said, man, you just did your time and that was it, man. So just want to give a quick thank you for that, man, because without you, we wouldn't be starting all this stuff. We wouldn't be where we at. And uh, yeah, man, it's been it's been a fun journey, man. I just want to thank you for that. Mm, no problem. Thanks yeah, for having and me. So- We are live in the studio. I'm here, Mindless Horror Podcast. It's been a bit. I'm here with my new co-host, Sammy. Hey, what's up, guys? Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Some stuff is falling in the back. Guess I'm getting a little too comfortable back here. Anyway, uh, we got a bunch of new podcast equipment, uh, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, I got this blue thing in my face. Yep. It's going to be cool. Sammy, you want to introduce the audience to yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah. What, what, do, what do I tell them? I don't know what to say. I don't know, man. So, what, I mean, you're not too big into horror. No, I'm a scaredy cat. So, yeah. like, imagine Andy from the Allen show. That's probably me. So, if you ever want to, like, have a fun time watching a scary movie, it's probably I'm probably the guy to bring because I'm bring. a big guy, but I'll be, like, at the edge of my seat the entire time. What does it say? It's recording. Is it recording? I guess. Wait, do you want me to switch to uh, from vertical to horizontal, or do you want me to keep it in vertical? It's up to you, brother. Well, you tell me. You, you, you're the the, go the to, mastermind. Go to horizontal real quick. I want to see what that looks like. Okay, it looks a little bit better. Okay. You just yeah. This will be the cold open, I guess, huh? 
cold? Cold open. Like Coors Light? Coors Light? No, cold. <laughs> Not Coors. Yeah. No, cold. Coors Light is supposed to be cold. Oh, whatever. I don't you know. don't see those commercials? No, I don't. Where have you been? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm either in this room right here or I'm at my job. So, or no, in my I, room. My I, room I, sleeping. The, so if you know Coors Light is cold, um, based upon the Rocky Mountains, on them, if they're if the, the bluer they are, the colder the drink is, I believe. What a fun fact. Random. Fun fact. That's a good way to I mean, kick off. I don't off. drink it, but that's a, that's a good way to kick off the 100th episode, huh? <laughs> 100? 100. Like what, two zeros? Two zeros, two zeros? man. Don't, Triple don't digits. Know, two... Three digits. All right. What is Get going on? <laughs> okay. Welcome to the madhouse. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. Wait, Sammy just mutes his mic. Uh, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast, episode 100. Uh, I, I felt it right that uh, we do this with the boys, man. Um, because The boys are back in town? Is that what you said? Are back in town? What are you, Thin Lizzy now or what? I'll be whoever you want me to be. You let. How about we leave Logan to the rock and roll, okay? Uh, I I think Sammy's got like a secret rock star life that we don't know about. I think he does. That's why he moved to Arizona. He's got a band out there, and you know he's got a he's got a he's got a tour coming soon. You may have caught me. He caught him, dead. He's pursuing his dreams, man. He's pursuing his dreams. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. <laughs> Logan, this is your uh, your like podcast debut with both of us, huh? Is it? Oh yeah, we did one, me and you, uh, yeah. where we talked horror nights, I believe. But this is like the debut for like right talking well, things, all things horror and, and all hello, that. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for thank you for having me, and let's talk about this horror shit, bro. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. We're bringing it back. First off, I think the first couple of, of minutes of this podcast is going to be reminiscing a hundred episodes that took. I think like two or three years to get to. Um, time is time is nothing. Time is nothing. Time is nothing. Uh, I I'm just shocked that we're at a hundred episodes. I never thought when doing this podcast we would get to a hundred episodes and we're here. So, <laughs> I mean, especially with the recent weeks. Yeah, Ooh, I didn't think we were gonna get there. I didn't think we were gonna get there but, either. But we're here. We made it. We made it. We're here. We made it. Uh, I want to thank all the fans. Um, for the constant support and the following and uh, always sending us kind comments and messages, um, whether it be social media or here on YouTube, you guys are honestly uh, the reason why we keep doing what we do. Um, of course, in recent weeks, stuff has been a little different, on, our, on my end at least, but um, you guys have still supported and still have uh, kept the following going, and I really appreciate that 100%. But... Um, I think a lot of this podcast wouldn't be necessary without my co-host Sammy. Um, when he stepped in and stepped up, coming back from college, you're you're like all your camera's all messed up now. What's up with that? <laughs> you're like, there we go. <laughs> I was like looking at his camera, and he was like this, and I was like, what the hell? Your mic's muted, by the way, buddy. Oh, of course it is. I was trying to find a new background. I was like, do I have anything that says Celebration 100? I was like, no, I don't. Uh, no, but it, it, it's been it's been a long time coming, man. I brought Sammy on. Uh, I think it was like episode – now I'm thinking about it. It was, it was episode like 20-something or 30-something. You've been there for Yeah, a I don't know. Yeah, I, I – I mean, It was so... – it was like November 2018 I've been yeah I've been on so yeah. um, we, we've kicked out a lot of them since then yeah uh, and I actually in the intro of this video um, of course with all the congratulations we've gotten from our fellow youtubers and, and friends um, we we also got you know I picked out some of the moments of when you know we did the first podcast and and when Sammy joined on um, so you know, it's just kind of a little reminiscence of the past and then going towards the future. Um, and, I, you know, I've had a lot of fun doing this show. And I hope it 
continues to be that way. I mean, because we've had a lot of guests on the show, very talented scare actors, um, very talented people that are high up in the haunt industry, uh, people who put on amazing shows such as Rick West, um, authors, directors, um, so many great people that have been on the show, uh, content creators, uh other podcasters you know it's been it's been really fun and we've 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 shot shows live at midsummer scream um we've gone to other places to shoot shows uh you know uh, film uh, even film composers john mazari uh was one of our biggest ones that we had on the show definitely what what was who is your favorite guest of all time favorite guest of all time man i mean they've all been super great and unique in their own way uh, but I think the one that really like when I give me a political it, answer or what a political answer? No, it's it's gonna be it's gotta be John, dude. John Mazzari was probably like I I never thought I'd meet someone who was actually part of the production of Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and and that pinnacle of actually sitting down with John and, and talking to him about the film and and the score and everything was, was awesome. Um, and to this day he's still like really cool with all of us. So uh, big shout out to John. But I, I mean. That doesn't go to show that I never liked any of the other ones that we've done. I mean, every person that we've interviewed, every person that we've sat down with has been unique and, and has been amazing. And it's just cool to uh, to really talk with people to see where where they are in their careers, where they want to go in their careers, um, or how their, how their content has changed over the years. We all asked Sammy again, damn it. Sammy just keeps – Sammy's just having all the technical issues today, huh? You're muted again, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I literally just scrolled over to – so, like, it shows who's talking. Yeah. And apparently it lost me, but I'm good now. Okay. But, no, it's been, it's been, it's been a wild journey, and I'm glad that we're here. And I thought today in, – and, you know, in, in a reminder of what this podcast was originally when it, when it started was to cover horror news and, and to – really talk about what's coming next in the horror world. We're going to do that exactly today. Uh, of course, we'll, we'll go back and, and talk a little bit about the past, but then we'll, we'll, you know, we're going to talk about what's coming in the future and uh, what to expect. I think we want to make uh, Logan, obviously, a, uh, another co-host on the podcast. So that's definitely something from 100 on that's going to happen. Um, but uh, it's going to be really, really fun, Logan, and I, I can't wait for you to really uh, be part of the Mindless Horror Podcast crew now. Thanks for the warm welcome, man. I'm stoked, and I can't wait for the future. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, you're going to make my job easier because <laughs> uh, I don't have to carry his load anymore. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, and that, that That's another fun thing about the Miles 4 podcast right there. Last year around this time, we did Summer of Guests. Obviously, it's a little bit different this year. There, we're not going to be really doing it too much because I think with Summer of Guests, we're more of like an in-person kind of thing, and it's a little bit hard to connect, reconnect with people in quarantine over – zoom or skype so uh we're we're gonna take put that on a hiatus until next year but we definitely want to keep that going um because that was a fun thing and i remember we recreated the uh, once upon a time in hollywood trailer that was one of the funnest things i remember doing uh we actually went out to a park with uh um, our photographer robert uh and we just <laughs> we were just out there filming the entire trailer we watched it like so many times i remember I, I have that trailer like played in my head still to this day because I had to watch it over and over again to get the right edits and what where to put what and wh exactly what cuts of the song that were used in that film. Man, that was a that was a that was a roller coaster, wasn't it, Sammy? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Why don't you just leave it unmuted? Just in here to hear. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> the entire time. I don't want you guys to hear that. I have I have a lot of respect for <laughs> the fans and the supporters of this channel. Um, I don't want you guys to have to sit through however long this ends up being of that. Um, but yes, it was a lot of fun um, in a good time. It was hot though. That was that's the one thing I do remember. It was we were only out there probably like we were like three hours. And I was like, oh my god, I just want to go inside some air conditioning. Yeah, we tried to, like we a tried nice to sit, cold drink. We tried to yeah, we tried to sit in a lot of shade. I remember after that, we actually went down to a gas station and actually bought like a bunch of we bought we bought each like a big soda just to down. We were all hungry. Um, it was just a roller coaster that day. But I think we got a lot of cool photography that we still use on the on the social medias today and gave us a damn good trailer that we put together. So that was really fun. But um. 
Yeah, man. I mean, it's been it's been a roller coaster of of emotions with this podcast. So let's let's get into. Is he doing it again? It's it's happening again. <laughs> a little sideways view. Sammy's just on it today. He's just on it today, Sammy. <laughs> just uh, he's still muted Sammy. again. <laughs> oh, he's getting a bunch of. I had to switch it up. I had to get the the That's shot, bro. Don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh. It looks- that's oh, that's the shot. Yeah, that's the one you had to get the iconic uh, um, doing of it, huh? There's Andrew right there. He's been on the podcast. We're finishing. We're filming the 100th episode. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. 100? Personal paradigm. We're on episode nine. Episode nine. You'll get there. No, ten. Ten of nine million. Episode ten out of ten million. Ten out of ten million. <laughs> <laughs> um. But it wouldn't be a mindless horror podcast, of course, if we didn't. Uh, we used to do a segment way back in the day uh, where we would look at who, people who've died uh, in the horror community and kind of pay our respects to them. And, of course, uh, one of those people that died this past week was Ian Holm. Ian Holm, if you guys know, famously played Ash and Alien and also had a, a major role in um, the Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy. I forget his name, but he, he was a, a major part in that. He, was, and... uh, he played Bilbo. Bilbo, yeah, there you go. Um, actually, right when I right when I say I forget his name, it literally pops up in the in the article. Bilbo Baggins played it in the uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Hobbit films as well, so that was really cool. Um, but yeah, it was uh, we lost him at the age of 88. Um, of course, like I said, uh, the reason why we bring him up is because Aliens was uh, or Alien is of course the uh, sci-fi masterpiece directed and produced by Ridley Scott um, that really put like a new meaning of horror on the map and it really revolutionized the way cinema went forward. I mean, like that whole movie shot in the future in space, very to this day, one of the greatest films I think in uh, that of aliens that we so have. Films, yeah. There's so many films that try to like replicate what alien did and they just can't do it. Like, yeah. A movie as old as it is, like nothing holds a candle to it. Right. No, I agree. It, it's just, it's this movie to this day. I mean, it's still, I mean, when it came out, that surprise ending of, of the, the, of course, the chest buster and everything, shocking audiences. That was, uh, all that was all like improvised. Like no one knew that was gonna happen. And when it happened, like that was all raw reactions and stuff. So, you know, this movie has a lot of, um, a lot of history and a lot of, uh, a lot of which you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I don't know what I'm. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is honestly. <laughs> but this movie's just historical, man. Yeah, it's a. It's got a big legacy. Um, for, I mean, to me, the two best sci-fi horror films are Alien and probably John Carpenter's The Thing. I mean, yeah. those two are just, you know, up there as masterpieces. And it still holds up. Alien, like, holds up for, you know, being made in the 70s. Like, yeah. if you watch it, like, I watched it in 4K, like, not too long ago. I'm like, it feels like you're watching, like, a modern film. It, it, just, it, it just hit 40 last year, too, not yeah. to mention. No, it's a fantastic film. Ian Holm is fantastic in that um, if... I, I hope most people have seen that, but if you haven't seen it, give that thing a watch. And yeah. I like, thank me later. Yeah, Alien's beautiful. Sammy, have you ever seen Alien? Do you already know the answer, probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, I, I, I wish I was Sammy. I, I, I wish I was Sammy so I can experience that for the first time all over again. Certainly, Sammy, it's on Voodoo. Out. Check it out. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I know. I was. We were supposed to watch it. Last weekend, though, because I was moving, we didn't get a chance to watch it. Because Gary said the same thing, meaning Slane's boyfriend, mm. that I need to to watch that move. I need to watch Alien and then Aliens. Yeah, um, both those, of them back to back. Fantastic. I, I I would say everything after Aliens is not very good. I mean, Alien Alien Three is okay, uh, but I like Prometheus. Third, Prometheus was good. Prometheus is yeah, it's not bad. Uh, but. I, like in terms of like this ten out of ten films, like oh Alien, yeah, you're never gonna beat the first two, man. Uh, and uh, Alien is very much more slow than Aliens. It's like a survival, it's just more of a survival horror film. And then Aliens is more of like an action back thriller. Yeah, uh, they're they're very different and very great in their own ways. So right. Sammy, get on those, man. Yeah, Alien vs Predator too. That was a fun oh, movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was fun. Predator, I mean, Predator Hunting Grounds is pretty sick to watch. Oh, yeah, you, your, your sister got that, right? Or Gary? Yeah, Gary got it. It's pretty Dude, sick to watch. Uh, that, if you get a chance, play that game. If you guys want to play a good, like, horror, like, kind of Dead by Daylight game, but, like, with weapons, 
Uh, Predator Hunting Grounds is good. I literally bought that game, and then I bought Duke's character because Duke 2025. I, I just wanted to spam get to the chopper like left and right, and that's all I do in that game. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when I play as a survivor, I play as Duke, and then, of course, playing as the Predator is just so much fun. Um, you get to, like, climb trees and just freaking jump everywhere, and you have your laser sight. You have the freaking... Uh, the um the different visions and stuff it's it's beautiful dude I, I i really am impressed with this game very fun but uh ian home man very good actor very talented actor he will be missed uh 88 years old man he lived a really good life uh it was, it, it was kind of strange because the day before he died uh, I'm, I'm a big lord of the rings junkie i i love anything tokian anything Lord of the Rings, and uh, my grandma hadn't seen all of them, so we were kind of binging it. And this is the, the day before he died. A spoiler alert: if you haven't seen Lord of the Rings, uh, at the end of uh, the third movie, or in, and also in the third book, because they're based on books, of course, um, Bilbo's character kind of dies. Like he doesn't, you don't see him die, but in the Lord of the Rings, like he gets on a ship with the elves, and the elves go to this land that's supposed to be like their version of heaven. And when you you're physically sailing there to a, like in a, to live your, the rest of eternity on, on this island, and Bilbo's old, and uh, it's very touching. The end brings a tear to your eye. So when I saw the news the next day, I'm like, God damn it! I'm like, yeah. I, it, you know, it was just very bittersweet, you know, because he went out in the movie uh, very bittersweet. And then yeah, I mean, I guess he lived a long life. 88 is a long good life, and uh, my condolences to his friends and family. And, uh, he will be, he will be very missed. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Very good actor, very talented person, uh, and can't wait to see uh, give a uh, alien another watch just because of him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to kind of remember him uh, as Ash. Uh, all right. Now that the uh, the sad part of the podcast is out <laughs> of the way, um, uh, Jordan Pill, as we guys, as you guys know, had took over the. Um, the the helm of the host of the Twilight Zone when they when they brought it back and and revived it for uh, NBC All Access well he just released a uh, new trailer for the new season which actually premieres on June 25th which I believe when this podcast comes out either the day of or okay the, so the podcast will be out Friday so it's already out <laughs> if you guys are Twilight Zone fans go check out season two the the fun thing about this season two is they just released all 10 episodes rather than waiting week by week so that's good to just binge watch honestly and i gotta finish season one but uh from what i was watching in season one they actually did a very good job um executing a lot of the classic uh stories that they've done and just kind of revamping them or creating new original ones um so i'm excited to see what they bring for season two of course twilight zone is also known for bringing in a lot of well-known actors to uh play roles on um on each episode they did that with the original series who were big actors at the time they did that for the movie who were big actors at the time so yeah it's just that's what they're known for man what are, what are your guys thoughts on this one sammy go ahead buddy yeah definitely i i'm i will i will you know i'll really admit that i didn't see season one and i'm really not like a super big fan of the original ones just because i really haven't taken the time to watch them but i know that i know logan's probably just angry Dude, now I I, um, I I designed a maze for this and you still haven't watched it i feel insulted like <laughs> I, my, my maze idea should have sparked interest in you to go and watch that show like i'm gonna I, binge watch I, it right now I, i'm taking this personal <laughs> i've been i've been a very busy man these last <laughs> few weeks you have tried to yeah. <laughs> try to organize my life yeah, um, I so I, I do apologize that i haven't given twilight zone enough love as it deserves uh, but with cbs all access Maybe maybe I'll do a free trial and see what's good. Um, there's a lot of things I need to watch in my list of things that Sam needs to learn in his a life. Uh, a lot. A <laughs> lot. Um, so I think it's going to be added to the list of things. Um, I don't know how high in the list it will be. I do apologize. I was going to say, I don't know when we're going to get there, but it's, it's, it's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the list. It's on the list. So uh, there's that. But I, I mean – Everything Jordan Pill has been doing, I've been enjoying. Right. Um, whether that be us or like Get Out, um, so I'm pretty sure it's good. Um, he's not putting his name on anything bad, so that's good. Maybe Candyman. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, kind of a statement. Uh, hasn't came out yet, so I can't say anything. 
he just pro- yeah. I think he just produced it. He didn't direct the, yeah, the new yeah. demon, right? So I, I guess if it's bad, I can't really blame Jordan Peele um, because there's so many times where producers like have their name on it, but really like, I mean, some more than others. I'm not saying that's about Jordan Peele, but a lot of producers just kind of show up, shake hands, say, "Oh yeah, that looks good," and then. They just uh, put the money into it, and that's at it. At least that's what John Carpenter does when he produces movies. Yeah, uh, just he but, just uh, puts his money. He's like, "Here's the check. There you go." Well, that's how it went with the Fog remake in 2006. Like his name's on, as, is on it as a producer, and he just literally showed up to the set one day and shook hands and then left. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, going getting sidetracked there. Uh, but as far as Twilight Zone goes, um, I haven't really watched the new show. Obviously, I'm I'm a diehard for the original. Um, I watched the first episode of the first season uh, that premiered. I think it was last year, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, I I thought it was okay. Um, I didn't have CBS uh, All Access, and I think just the first, when I watched the first episode, they were just they put that one out for free to see if you liked it. And so I watched that, and I didn't really catch my interest to want to get a CBS uh, All Access, um, you know, uh, m- uh, membership, but. Um, I, I might give this another try. I've been, a lot of people have been telling me, and Anthony were telling me that it's pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of Easter eggs to the original show. So uh, I'm happy to hear that they're getting a second season for the people that really like it. Uh, I didn't know it was coming out so soon. I had no idea. This is all I had no idea either, dude. I was on Bloody Disgust every morning looking at stuff radar. we could talk about, and that was one of them. And then they showed wow. the trailer, and they're like, oh, all episodes launching June 25th. I was like, oh, the wow. same day uh, Doom Patrol Season 2 comes out. All right, cool. I'm going to be a little busy. <laughs> So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where this season takes us. Um, I, I, I'm curious to see if they're going to revive any old stories again. I mean, there's so much content they can work with. They can bring in so much stuff and really do really good job, really good work on them with uh, new special effects and stuff, uh, really kind of update them. Not to say the old ones sucked. I mean, I think that's what made the Twilight Zone back in the day was the fact that they used practical effects for all their you know episodes, and that's what really iconalized – is that a word? Iconalized? I don't know. Uh, I would say idolized. Idolized, yes. That's what really made that show so idolized, man, because it's it's just with a lot of the effects in the black and white and uh, Rod Sterling, great narrator. Yeah. Um, and then he went on to do his own show, which I heard is even creepier. Um, uh, Night Gallery. I think. Yeah, Night Gallery, yeah. which I heard is really good too. Um, so. I'm excited for this, man. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna binge watch the entire show from season one again, just to kind of get a feel for things and, and see it again. But there was a lot of good episodes, man, and a lot of trippy episodes. Can't can't bring up Twilight Zone without at least mentioning the movie. If if nobody's seen Twilight Zone, the movie that was made in like I think it was like '81 or '82, give that thing a watch. Like they uh, they uh, they do a couple of segments, like they they remake a couple of segments from the original show in that movie with. 80s effects and like if you're an 80 horror junkie like me like it's got uh, john landis who directed american werewolf in london yeah it's got steven spielberg does a segment um uh george i think it's george miller even does uh he does the nightmare at thirty thousand feet or whatever it's yeah. a good freaking movie if anybody hasn't seen it i, I would highly recommend it that was part of the uh, cursed films too because i guess the uh actor and the two kids died on the vietnam uh, yeah, that's short. It. yeah. The first segment, uh, John Landis kind of got blacklisted in Hollywood because of that whole thing. Yeah, uh, a lot in, in like rules and cinema, and very sad. But yeah, they had to of course change the ending to that segment. Yeah, that was a very, uh, yeah. uh, very interesting. When I saw that, uh, if you guys get a chance, watch the Curse films on uh, Shutter. But yeah. um, that's one of them that they talk about, and uh, I guess they broke laws working kids over a certain time. So kind of sad. Actually, really sad because uh, people died because of that incident so however still an iconic movie still a great movie um and get rolling on this again um so netflix doing something pretty uh interesting man any of you guys fans of the grudge series is it the grudge yeah the grudge anybody like the grudge absolutely sammy yes amigo we like the grudge well not the shitty american remake that we watched for free no we love that one that was my favorite one no it's not it's fucking oh. don't I, I i i suggest anyone i just lost all respect for Sam. if have you seen it logan i didn't, I didn't have much respect for sammy already but like just the little bit that i had is gone <laughs> it's gone 
Damn, at least he's being honest, though. At least he's like, there was a little respect there, but now it's just gone. <laughs> but what do you mean? That film was beautiful. Like, um, if you needed a nap, like, you just put that film on. <laughs> and then just night-night. And then a jump scare happens and it wakes you up. <laughs> no, but the original Japanese grudge, uh, I don't remember what the original name was called. It wasn't called Junon. Grudge. Yeah, Junon. Yeah, that's some scary shit. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I've seen like the the Sarah Michelle Gellar one, which is another pretty good, okay remake, um, better than what we got last year, I could say. Um, but I guess they're doing Netflix is doing a June on Origins. Uh, I don't know if it's a show or a movie, but it's going to be taking place at the cursed house again in Japan. Uh, so that's going to be fun. Um, kind of the return after what we got, an Americanized version of the Grudge. Um, just bringing the curse over to America and really kind of changing the, what the demons look like and, and, and stuff. But I, I'm excited for this one. This could be kind of a, a, a revival of of the grudge um, because, like I said, the Americanized one didn't do so good, and I think Japan took notice of that, and they're like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited for that. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Um, no, yeah, I mean, like I said, the original – uh, Japanese grudge is some scary shit and uh, actually I, most people I know haven't seen it um, if you haven't seen that like watch that thing man it's a uh, Japanese horror films are, are pretty fucked up uh, yeah. uh, it's really good uh, the Sir Michelle Geller one was okay I thought it would but com- once you watch June Un like there's no comparison um, yeah. so um, I, 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 I'm pretty stoked that uh it's Netflix, right? That that's picking up the show. Yeah, it's actually on Netflix as of right now as we speak. Oh, is it? I think oh, so. I, I know what I'm doing later. There you go. Uh, yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, honestly, uh, if they bring it back to the Japanese roots, like it's got a lot of potential. Yeah. Uh, Sammy, what, what about you, man? Yeah, I agree that if 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 it's taking the Japanese take on it, it's going to be a good thing. Um, I just hope it doesn't. It, like tie into this whole American universe yeah, yeah. that they really tried to make. Um, the other thing I hope for is that, like many films, um, that it, it doesn't try to make the Asian culture American. Um, I hope like they they actually typecast it well. And, you know, used actual so Japanese people and the cast and for a majority like looks, not just looks all Asian right now. That's what I was excited for because this that's where it did come from. I think they all speak English though. So it's not like dubbed over. Or you're not having to read subtitles. Like everyone speaks English on the cast, but they all are Asian. It just it takes place back at the Japan cursed house, which is cool. Yeah, that that gives me some hope. Um, because, like, I mean, I, I don't mind if it's like dubbed or subtitled or whatever. But like, if they're gonna do it in English, that's fine. I just hate like when they take a film like I E the Ring or like The Grudge, and they're like, all right, well, we're gonna make it a white person thing now, <laughs> um, even though this is some Asian spirit, you know, some Asian folklore. Right. And let's just make it uh, a middle class family in Massachusetts <laughs> that this is happening to now. Yeah, I, I completely 100% agree. And we can't forget about the masterpiece that was The Ring versus The Grudge that J- Japan made. I still have yet to watch, and I really do want to watch. Um, I think that was, uh, that was the, the, the crossover we didn't deserve, but we got. Um, and I, I don't know, man. I don't. I, who, who do you think would win in that fight realistically? Like... You got two freaking demon type ghost like characters. One that haunts a house with like a little brother, and then the other one that is in a possessed cursed videotape. So I don't realistically who would win in that fight. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the answer to that one. But that is a real movie, by the way. I mean, you can find The real it. winner is the audience. The audience. <laughs> Getting to experience that. <laughs> yeah. That's a real movie, by the way. Yeah. I think Japan did it about a year or two ago. And they were like, yeah, we're, we're going to do this movie. And I was like, we haven't seen something as good as this since Freddy vs. Jason, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's going to be a fun watch. And if they're going towards, like, the origins, maybe we'll get to how the kids became uh, how they are today and, and what happened to them maybe. Maybe a more backstory on, on, the whole, on the whole grudge in general. So I'm excited for that. You know, the next crossover we need is uh, The Shape vs. Uh, Leatherface. Um, yeah, that'll be pretty. That. That'll be lit. I'll I'm do down that. for it. I don't think I could answer that. Uh, that's that's. It is a hard one because the shape is a pretty tough motherfucker. But Leatherface guy has that chainsaw, which is kind of in his advantage. Yeah, 
that's true. But we ha we have seen the shape over the years use many things to kill many people. So. Yeah, he's very uh, creative in his kills. And I and I gotta give it to him with stealth at least. He's really good as a stealth killer. Leatherface just goes out there. Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck about. Stuff. Yeah, he just doesn't care. Um, that'd be a good one. Maybe a good uh, horror icon mashup. That'd be fun, huh? Bringing that show back. We're gonna do it. That's gonna be fun. Bring her back. Bring her back. Uh, mm. this one's. I know this one's gonna be a little. This is a. This is more of a Logan kind of topic right here because he's he's right. the he's the collector of the group. Um. Go. The iconic film 13 Ghosts is getting a Blu-ray collector's edition release from Scream Factory. I know you've bought movies from Scream Factory before. Uh, oh, um, dude. I've got shells and shells of Scream Factory. Yeah, and, they, and they're famous for actually taking a lot of iconic horror films and giving them a dope, awesome, like, uh, special edition, uh, like, casing and stuff like that, packaging, which I think is really cool. Um, so, Logan, being that you're the collector of the group, what are your thoughts of 13 Ghosts getting a collector's edition oh, release? Okay dope man uh it, it's uh, i believe it's the remake right because there's an original 13 ghost yeah the it. remake with um matthew lillard or however yeah, you say his name yeah that's a great remake it's, yeah. it's a great remake uh, and i don't say that too often um but scream factory always does for the most part just a fantastic job at um remastering movies and like they, they'll give it like a 4k scan and they'll just load it with special features that you've never seen before and like new commentary so if you're into like you know how films were made and you want to like hear from the cast and the and the crew that made the film and like hear where they're at now and uh see their or hear their their opinions on it and just telling you stories of like times on the set like it's uh it's worth the money screen factories aren't cheap um usually uh they're between um brand new depending on how much content is within the the the, the blu-ray it usually ranges between 25 to 35 dollars Okay, that's not too bad, actually. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad, but compared to, like, you know, $20, $20 movies that release at, like, yeah. you know, Target and whatnot. But 35 is usually the common uh, is usually the common price for those. But you're, you're, you're getting all kinds of crazy special features with it. And then uh, if you're a packaging nut like me, like, I like buying, like, stuff for my shelf that looks cool. Um, they always – they give it a cool slip cover with new artwork on it. And then on the inside of, of, of the Blu-ray case, it comes with like a a, a reversible artwork, so uh, you can reverse it to the original VHS uh, cover. And then on the outside, on the slip, you get the new commissioned art. It's a cool collector's item. Yeah. Uh, but if you like the movie uh, Thirteen Ghosts, then this is going to be the best version you'll have. Um, also, I'd like to mention another Screen Factory that I'm looking forward to coming out in August is Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. Uh, it's an it's an anthology. Of course, Tales from the, from the Dark Side was an anthology show, kind of like Twilight Zone. Yeah. And they they made a movie, and it actually, um, not to get too deep into this, but uh, it's kind of the untitled Creep Show Three. Okay. Uh, yeah, a lot of it's it's considered Creep Show Three, and there's a I, don't, I won't go into the whole story as to why, um, but uh, the the guys who made Tales from the Dark Side were supposed to make this as a Creep Show Three. And something happened with licensing, if I remember correctly, and they, they gave it the Tales from the Dark Side name. But if you haven't seen that one, check it out. That Screen Factory is launching in, in uh, August, I believe. Nice. But, um, yeah, no, if you guys haven't bought anything by a Screen Factory, highly recommend. I'm not biased or anything. Uh, <laughs> but anyways. No, I've been seeing a lot of packaging from Screen Factory, and I've been wanting to get my hands on a couple of things. Um, well, and on a lot of them, if you pre-order through the website, it comes with a poster. Oh, which sweet! Is really, which is really cool. So if you're into posters, I don't. I, they might be giving out one for Thirteen Ghosts, but you have, you have to pre-order on the Screen Factory website, and it'll ship with like the new commissioned art. I don't even uh, know if my room in this room I can fit any more posters. <laughs> Sammy knows that for a fact. I got too much goddamn posters in here. It's already starting to get to the ceiling now. Mm, you just gotta. Yeah, you guys got to keep uh, keep going up. Um, I think we're going to take your carpet out next time I come down. Oh, we can start on the floor, maybe. Yeah. Uh, then we'll put like a laminate over it. That way, you know, we'll laminate it. That way you can walk on it still. Floor posters. <laughs> that's a good idea, actually. That's not a bad idea. Uh, yeah, that's a, actually a great idea, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy, give me some Do ideas. I, uh, am I back on the respect list, guys? Maybe like an ounce? Hey, you're, you're, at gram? A, you're at an ounce. Yeah. An ounce. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. After that whole grudge comment, uh, it went down. But then you reinformed that it was uh, just to go to sleep, and I, I can understand that. So, yeah. I mean, come on, dude. Sammy's the master of sleeping. Come on. 
I respect that, and I, and I envy you, Sammy. We know that. There you go. He could sleep through anything. Should, For, I, should I go to sleep right now? You probably right can you? if you wanted to. <laughs> I'm outside. It's pretty hot. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, but, yeah, 13 Ghosts is a great movie, and I hope it comes. Actually, this is one that I hope it comes to Horror Nights one year, too. I think yeah. they can execute that well. Yeah. That would be, be definitely a good one. Uh, last thing we could talk about. Oh, we got one other thing that I want to talk about that came to my head while we were filming this. But uh, the last bit of news, at least, that we'll talk about is uh, Shutter already ordered uh, a creep show season three. Season two is not even out yet. I don't even think they've begun filming yet. And season three is already being ordered by Shutter and AMC. So um, that's good. That shows that this show has a good following. And I know me and Logan were talking a little bit about it before the uh, we went on the air. But um, – that I guess that with season one, you know, the budget wasn't as big, but with season two, since they're going to be with AMC now, the budget's a little bit bigger and better. So that's good to hear. I mean, I, I'm excited, especially with uh, Greg Nicotero on board and them doing uh, a lot of practicals uh, with effects. That's that's always a, a, a plus for me. I love practical effects. I mean, John Carpenter's famous for doing them. Uh, of course, Greg Nicotero's famous for trying to do as much as he can with them. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are just very, they love doing practical over special effects if they can. And I'm, I'm a, I'm a sucker for practical effects. So what do you guys think about Creepshow season three? Uh, freaking hype, dude. I mean, honestly, uh, I'm like, I, I was, I was, uh, taken back that they announced a season three because obviously season two hasn't, uh, been put out yet, but I'm, I was stoked that we're getting the whole future of Creepshow. And um, the first two films are just among my favorite horror films of all time, especially Creepshow 2. I think it's highly underrated. Um, but yeah, having someone like Greg Nicotero helm this is awesome because he's paying respects to uh, the originals with the practical effects and the blue and red lighting. Yeah. Uh, that's very bright and comic booky. Uh, and Greg Nicotero, of course, he, uh, uh, he worked heavily on uh, Creepshow 2. And of course, he does The Walking Dead. He did Day of the Dead. He he with George Romero. He he they just went together so well. Uh, and of course, George, George Romero did the original Creep Show. And then uh, Tom Savini, I believe, uh, he's another uh, pra pra uh, practical effects makeup uh, legend. Right. Uh, right next to Greg Nicotero, and he directed an episode and the first season of Creep Show that came out uh, last year on Shutter. I think it was the one with the Loch Ness monster. Okay. Uh, it's a it's a great show. Um, it's uh, very nostalgic. Uh, if you're into anthologies and of course Creep Show, the the first two movies, um, I think they already started filming. If I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. I think they started filming season two. Yeah. Uh, if I actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think they wrapped it up and they were in post production when this whole thing, uh, when this whole pandemic started. Um, so. I'm really excited to see it come to AMC because that means it's going to get a, a higher budget than the first season. Right. Um, and I, I'm all for creep show stuff, man. I, 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 Halloween Horror Nights, of course, did The Maze last year, and that was a huge hit. Um, I, I'm all for new creep show merchandise, new creep show uh, you know, episodes. I'm, I'm down for it. I, I'm a sucker for anything anthology. Like, right. I grew up Goosebumps, Tales from the Crypt. Like, that, that's my shit. Dude, Goosebumps was the shit. I hope they kind of do a nice revival of that, kind of like the old series, but bring it back and just kind of modernize it a little bit more. That'd be dope. Nineties, that nineties series is it's beautiful. Cringe. So beautiful at the same time. Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> I think it's on Netflix too. So yeah, yeah. I, I had a guy make because you know I me, mean, I'm like a physical media whore. Uh, I, I had a guy make a, a Blu-ray set for me. Uh, nice. From, they don't, of course, make that. Um, so yeah, dude. Like even though I've got it accessed on my on my Netflix, I still pop open the the case and put the Blu-ray in. There's something special about physical media that just digital doesn't, you know. No, I agree. No physical media, you're gonna get the best and highest quality yep. compared to anything digital. Like that's a guarantee because you know you're not streaming it. You have the actual copy. So yep. that's good. Sammy, thoughts on Creep Show? We went to the maze last year, obviously. So I want to hear your thoughts on what you think of season three yeah. coming. <sighs> No, definitely. I think it's a great thing. Um, I have I've yet to see the Shutter series. Um, I had wanted to, but once again, there's that long list of things that I, Sam needs to watch. Uh, we we watched we watched the movie and, uh, at least. He's seen he's seen the movie yeah. at least. That's good. Uh, I've seen the seen the movie. Um, I think I just I, I I just didn't realize when it came out. I knew it was coming out last year, but I just never figured out when it came out, and then I never got, went around to getting Shutter. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely something on my watch list. Um, and I heard it was really good. 
um, obviously it's really nice when they modernize something that came out in like the seventies, eighties, whenever it came out originally. Yeah. Um, the maze was tremendous. I thought tremendous. Um, Tremendous. No tremendous. one does it better. No one does it better. It's tremendous. It's great. <laughs> it's our it's, it's great. our it's our daily Mrs. it's Mrs. our great again. it's our it's our weekly uh, Trump impersonation on the on the show. It's huge. Yeah. It's huge, great. Huge. Huge. It's, it's great. gonna be two mazes in one. We're gonna do three from the original, two from the new one. No one does it better. It's great. <laughs> yeah, so I thought it was really awesome the the new stuff they did. Um in the maze um so i'm excited you know obviously some of those ideas they created were great obviously if you have people like greg nicotero behind it tom savini yeah you know that you're gonna be getting some good quality stuff obviously you know some people's favorite parts of the walking dead was greg nicotero's you you know obviously he worked with george romero people love him um and so i think there's a lot going on there a bigger budget with amc is always a great thing yeah um well most of the time you know most of the time bigger budget means better quality sometimes you know people bigger budget just means they just spend more yeah. just because they can but I, I anticipate them spending more because it's going to produce a better product uh it obviously they did a good job with season two because it hasn't been released and they're already like let's get season three in yeah so i'm imagining some of those early watches prove that season two is worth a watch yeah um and that it needs to be renewed um and i and you know obviously with an ever-expanding world and more things to draw from in terms of horror um you know there's there's that there's that possibility for a season three yeah um to revisit maybe old stuff and create new stuff right so i'm excited and uh, i know some of our audience were probably going to be real excited about that news to be able to see more creep show right no yeah and i agree i think with creep show that what they're doing is mashing some of the old with the new i mean they're they're basing new stories around the creep show name which i think is cool of course this is a stephen king um, comic book that was made, which was a really great comic book. Uh, I remember looking through that and flipping through the pages at a, at a bookstore one time and just take, taking a quick look at it. And it looked so spot on to the, like what the movie is. They get a lot of the coloring right and stuff. So, yeah, it was cool to see Stephen King actually take a break from writing novels and actually creating like a graphic novel based around horror stories, which was Creepshow. Um, and it was such a great, uh, great film. Um, and I gotta, I gotta get the book. I want to read the book now, um, because it looked amazing, but no, I'm excited to see where they go with this. I mean, with creep show now, I mean, I, I, I imagine that they're going to try to accomplish all the original stories that they can and remake them into a more modernized, more heavy special effect, good, uh, quality stuff, uh, and then create some of their own original stuff, which we've seen that they have done in the past and it's come out really amazing. I mean, one of my favorites, uh, thus far was of course the like I, we, me and Logan were talking about the the werewolves and World War Two was such a great um, story and we actually got to see that one in the maze Sammy that was one of the ones that they featured in the maze and it actually made it made a lot more sense to me after I watched that episode I was like okay this makes so much more sense after going through that maze like just I get this now you, just wait till you get to the companion I think is what it's called uh, there's an episode called the, called the companion that it it ties into the original movie I won't give anything away but nice. that's like I got goosebumps when I watched that. As like a big diehard creep show nerd, I was like cheering on my couch. Yeah. So wait till you get to that. Be excited for that one. Uh, speaking of Greg Nicotero, um, who of course is helming this, uh, you've never seen me geek out harder ever when I was at Horror Nights in uh, 2015 and I saw Greg Nicotero and John Murdy walking together with their families in the simpsons area That's i like i lost my shit dude but like they were they were with their families and i didn't want to be that guy to go up to them and yeah but like i was just like my friend and i were just like geeking the hell out but greg nicotero is a horror legend uh he's the only person that could have done this creep show series and give it justice right. uh of course he, he had roots in the original uh i don't know if he was in the if he was involved in the first movie, but he was definitely involved in the second movie. So um, being that he had a close relationship with George Romero, who directed the first movie, he's the only guy to do this and he does it justice. Right. So if you haven't seen uh, season one of creep show, uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, enjoy it. Check it out. Yeah. It's on AMC too. So if you can't subscribe to shutter, I mean, you can get AMC or something or watch it. Um, definitely check it out. I got to finish it for sure. I was really getting, you know what else? What else? Got to put it in the garbage. Got to get the garbage. <laughs> 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 no, 
uh, that was an iconic scene from the maze right there. But um, to really end this uh, 100th episode uh, with a milestone such as big as ours, um, we have another milestone on our hands that just happened recently, and that's Jaws. What is it now? I think it's 45 or 40. Yeah, that just recently <laughs> happened. I, I can't remember. The open sea. I can't remember the the actual the birthday. I think it's forty five years old though. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, forty five. Yeah, Seventy five. Yeah, so that makes sense. Wow. Forty five years old, man. Jaws, one of the most iconic shark uh, horror movies out there. One of the only PG horror movies that I know of. Um, mm-hmm. And for it being PG, and with all Poltergeist. the Poltergeist, Poltergeist too. Poltergeist. Yeah, Poltergeist came to mind too. Poltergeist is another one. Um, two iconic PG movies that. Don't deserve the PG rating, but the rating system was so much different in the 70s and 80s at the time that, oh my God, um, giving nightmares left and right. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think Jaws had a big impact in the world when it came out. Of course, another Steven Spielberg classic. Uh, yeah. Another reason why I love the director so much. Um, but th- this ultimately put great white sharks on the endangered species list because after this movie came out, people just went to go hunt them left and right. Uh, and that's that's a big that's a big deal right there. I mean, it, it shows how much of an impact this movie had on on society because people wanted to go hunt great whites because of how dangerous they looked in the film. Um, but this this film's so iconic, man. I mean, you have of course the crew that goes out to hunt him, and of course everything that leads up to that final showdown with uh, with them and, and Bruce the shark. Um, the 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 disaster behind making the film cost him a whole year of production just because the, they had a, so much problems with the shark and everything. Yeah. yeah, you take the Bro, you cannot, you cannot mention Jaws without talking about its score. John yes. Williams, John Williams did a beautiful job. Yep, writing a score full of tension and beauty and yep. adventure. Um, that's, and where the, that's where the music guy comes in right here. Sammy's the music guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, well, the guy. Okay. No, 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 Logan. Lo- oh, Sammy. Lo- Sammy's the the score musical guy. Okay, you you're a different yeah. type of musical guy. Okay, we know what your music is, but Sammy, I could talk to this guy about freaking classical music, and this guy will know like everything. I'm just like, oh, oh shit. Okay, it looks like I didn't know anything. <laughs> Bro, I, I and just the tension that da 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 da. You can do that to anyone, and they know basically that's Jaws. And it's so it's such a uh, simple score, and it's so effective. Yeah, like sometimes simple is best. You know? Well, not only, not to mention that's been probably redone and parodied so many times, so it shows you the kind of impact it's had over the years. So, I mean, Jaws is just that. Those are the next kind of Funkos I have to get, and Sammy already knows my problem with Funkos. There's a couple of big ones that I want. I think there's one with them on the ship. There's one of Bruce, of course, and then they have the three people. That I have to get, man. Those guys are just those would be good for my horror collection right there. I think um, what, what makes Jaws so great too is that a lot of the horror is what you don't see. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the, you know, it's following the the point of view of the shark, which is in modern especially modern shark movies, like you're seeing it all. I mean, and there's some good modern shark movies, but I mean in comparison, like it, it's more psychological because you're it's what you don't see, you know, that uh, I already know that, what Sammy's so, thinking. Don't fucking say it either. I actually kind of want to hear him say it. What the hell? Are you Don't thinking? fucking say it. <laughs> it's the man that the one. God damn it! I knew he was thinking that immediately. That shitty shark movie, The Meg, is horrible. Oh, Don't watch oh, it. Oh, dude, I was not thinking of that when I was thinking of good shark movies. No, I, my I know, but I, I knew I, what Sammy was I, thinking immediately. Your respect was here. It's it's gone way down, dude. He doesn't I, like it. It's just because it it's it's something we always talk about with uh, with Jason Statham. The oh. fact that he can't say Megalodon, he goes, it's a Megalodon. Um, <laughs> and my my dad, he's a very big fan of cheesy uh, monster creature features and all that. Like, he's a, he's a huge fan of Godzilla. Loves them all. Every single one of them from the Japan days to like, even up to today. He's a huge uh-huh. Godzilla fan. But he uh-huh. loves anything big monsters, uh, giant underwater monsters. So he watched the Megan and actually enjoyed it. I'm like, you're a horrible person for liking this. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna. Uh, we're I mean, gonna... like, uh, I think one of my other favorite shark movies is a uh, Deep Blue Sea, that's but that's a movie. movie that shows you what happens every time. Yeah. Whereas Jaws doesn't show you. Deep Blue Sea, like, definitely shows. Wasn't you Deep Blue Sea though? Like the happens. sharks were like a lot smarter though, right? They were like mutated or something. Uh, it was like one shark only. That was like really and smart. He was like, 
they were yeah they were doing like tests on him and stuff like that yeah and like he's just like fudging reeks havoc that is one of the best samuel jackson death scenes ever too uh <laughs> have you guys seen the uh the some of the shots that weren't used in in the original jaws like there's there's one that comes to mind that you should google and it's terrifying and it, it, they um obviously they, they shot the scene but they didn't use it in the movie and you can't even find the scene itself but you can find black and white pictures and that scene in Jaws where the kid gets eaten on the, it was like, the, I think it's on the 4th of July when everybody's at the beach and he's on that like little floaty. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't obviously see the kid being eaten, but you see the blood and you see, you know, him wiggling around. But there's a shot that is terrifying if you go on Google Images and it's the kid laying there on his little floaty and the shark like biting him, like the kid's laying in the shark's mouth and it looks Oof. terrifying. And I wish they would have kept that because it is scarring. I, they probably didn't want to lose the PG rating. Yeah. Uh, but my God, like if if they ever come out uh, and they want to splice that into the film as like an extended edition, like it, it's just the image. Like I don't know about you guys, but sharks scared the fuck out of me. Yeah, I think that's a lot of reasons why a lot of people when that movie came out were scared yeah. to go to the beach. And I've even heard stories from like my dad and and yeah. everybody that. They were scared to freaking go to the bathtub. They were scared to go in the deep end of the of the freaking swimming pool, man, because they thought Jaws was over there, man. So it shows you the. Yeah, that's how I was when I was a kid when I first saw it. I was scared of water at yeah. all. Yeah, I'm more scared of just the ocean now because like, you don't know what's in the ocean, man. Um, it's almost more. Uh, it's almost more of a mystery than outer space sometimes. Yeah, at least with outer space, though, if you were, if you were to die, you just die instantly. <laughs> no, it, it is like. We have definitely not discovered most of the ocean. Yeah. And we don't know what's going down that deep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the deeper we get, the more we find out. But the right. deeper and deeper we get, we're like, that's happening down there? <laughs> uh, that exists? Also, Jaws, of course, being directed by Steven Spielberg. Uh, a lot of people don't recognize Steven Spielberg as a horror director. He's actually got a horror – he's got a list of good horror films in his film repertoire that – um, don't like you know when you think of Steven Spielberg obviously he's not just a niche director he does it all but you know people name like John Carpenter and uh, George Romero and Wes Craven you know as these big horror directors but Steven Spielberg honestly I think is up there I mean Jaws is is just legendary and then also uh, we were talking about Poltergeist just a little bit earlier he produced that though right he produced it but he's he actually directed it and is uncredited uh, oh wow so, Okay, not to get into like the politics of, of film, yeah. But um, and don't quote me on this, but it's like a it's it's a rumor and it's a big uh, in the horror world. It's it's a big kind of a, uh, I don't know what to call it. Uh, but Toby Hooper, of course, is credited as the director of Poltergeist. He, Toby Hooper, of course, did Texas Chainsaw One and Two and uh, so many great films. But um, from what I have heard. One of the main reasons why Poltergeist doesn't have a bunch of special features and making ups because uh, uh, Steven Spielberg doesn't want the word to get out that he that he directed this film because he doesn't want to be blacklisted in Hollywood. Um, yeah. The story behind this is I believe he was directing E.T. at the same time, and he was directing E.T. and I believe the rule was you can't direct two films at once, and so he was kind of ghost directing Poltergeist, and I think Toby Hooper had a good hand in it. Yeah. But if you really watch Poltergeist, it's very Steven Spielberg. It's, yeah. It's super Steven Spielberg. And a lot of people that have worked on the movie have nonchalantly said that, yeah, Toby Hooper was there on set, but Steven Spielberg was the one, like, working on it. Like, no disrespect to Toby Hooper. He's an amazing man. God rest his soul. He's uh, he's made some great films, but I think uh, Poltergeist is very Spielberg. So, anyways, when, when you watch that movie – Think about Spielberg, and and you'll you'll really go, oh yeah, this was much more Spielberg than Hooper. Right. But anyways, but yeah, just with Jaws, I think Steven Spielberg is a fantastic horror director. I wish he would make more horror movies, um, because he's done phenomenal horror movies. But anyways. Right. No, and I agree, especially with a movie like Jurassic Park too. That's got some horror elements into oh, it as absolutely. well. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The Jurassic Park trilogy, favorite. and then now he's producing the the newer ones. Um, very yeah. The guy's got a lot of a lot of horror elements to him, and not to mention the 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 scene he filmed for Ready Player One, the Shining scene, yeah, yeah. was amazing. Absolutely, yeah. That guy's like a closet horror director. Yeah, 
closet like, horror. Come yeah. out of the closet, dude. We want to see some more <laughs> horror from you. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Uh, but that's going to do it for the 100th episode, man. That is that is a wrap, as like they say in Hollywood, man, because, man, 100 episodes. Never thought we'd make it this far, and we made it this far. So uh, that's a round of applause of its own right there, if you ask me, man. I'm excited. Um, so tune in next week for episode 101. I don't know where we're going to go from there, but we'll figure something out. Um, Sammy, do you want to say any last words for the 100th episode? Uh, stay classy, San Diego. Yes. And uh, keep watching because uh, there's more to come. More to come. Just because we reached 100 doesn't mean we're stopping. No. Uh, but thank you for everyone that has been here um, for the previous 100 episodes. Um, and, uh, you know, we can't do it without supporters like you. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know the words of PBS, you know, it's a, uh, I forget what PBS says, uh, supporters like you that provide the funding for this or whatever. Um, so just keep on keep on liking these videos, commenting, um, and we'll, we'll keep making them. Um, yeah. Because it's, uh, we, we do it for you guys as much as we enjoy doing it. We, uh, you know, we like to, we like to talk our heads off and how to share our opinions and, uh, we hope you guys like watching. Right. So, uh, yeah. Let's look at Logan, that. man. He was a fan. Now he's part of the channel. Yeah. No, it was such a small world. I, we already talked about, you know, in, in my debut on how that all happened, but yeah, we just thought, cause Anthony, of course, came to Maiden USA shows and the Iron Maiden tribute that I'm in. And I, I'm a sucker for any haunt speculation stuff, and uh, that's how I found the the Knights of Horror, and then now uh, here I am, a part of it, which is awesome. Oh. And I think I, I I thank you guys for bringing me on. I thank everybody watching for letting this channel uh, to continue to grow. Uh, I'm excited for what the future holds. So H H N, if you're watching, it was because of that band right there that we're all together. So, absolutely. I'm just saying. Thank you, thank you we're, mate. We're waiting for that to come to H H N. I'm just saying. Oh, uh, Dude, dude, don't get me started because that's going to be a whole other hour we're going to have. A whole other video right there. Oh, yeah, don't yeah. even get me started on it. Do you want me to throw some trigger words at you guys real quick? Like oh, oh, Billy, um, 2020. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Eyelash. <laughs> Eyelash. I think, isn't there, like, I don't know if Ozzy actually said this, but I think there's a meme he's all, what the fuck is a Billy Eyelash? <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, we got a lot of great, um, a lot of great content coming, especially the return of Maze Treatments. You guys thought yeah. it was canceled. We're not canceling it. Oh. It's going still. It's coming. Yeah, it's yeah. Coming. Some, some things in our in our world took place that, of course, you know, uh, that needed to be uh, more of a priority than uh, than Maze Treatments. And uh, of course, it's not canceled. We're we're excited to do it. I'm super excited to do it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've got some great guests that have some great ideas, so I can't wait to to get going on that again. July, what was the what was the return date? I think it was July first, I believe. You tell me, buddy. You I'll don't know. You, I'll tell you right now. I'll, I'll give you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you July first, which is next week. May Street. That's returns. a Wednesday. So That's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Yes. So July first, May Treatments returns with a brand new episode. SoCal exploring Scott versus Lost TV's Adrian. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be dope. I mean, you, yeah, there's, there's no, uh, you gotta really step it up after what Hotline brought to the, to the table. Yeah, so I, I, again, just to reiterate that a little bit, I was like, man, Matrix, it's not happening. And then like, I, I want that, like, so yeah. bad. You saw that pitch, I, and you're like, oof. It's all about the pitch, uh, you know, for future, uh, for future guests on, on Maze Treatments. If you pitch it well, you could win. That's all about yeah. the That's all it took, man. Mystery had a solid lineup for a, a good maze with Baby Metal, but yeah. that freaking Matrix one, man. Yeah, I, I think what it really helped a lot, too, was he gave us visuals as an idea of what he wanted it to look like, so that really helped us a lot. So for future competitors, provide visuals because that will help us a lot to give us an idea of what this maze is going to look like. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. There you go. But uh, that is going to do it for episode 100. We appreciate every single one of you subscribers out there, all 1,100 of you. And we're going to keep grinding. We're going to keep giving you the best content we possibly can. And, uh, yeah, guys, I will see you guys all next week. And uh, you guys stay safe out there.